start lefties losing it with suicidally stupid protesters who are backing a regime that would imprison, torture and kill them. I'll be speaking to Alex Stein later in the show about a hilarious bit of comedy he created. This is what inspired it. But what can you say, Kosha? I mean, uh, I don't think I need to state what the laws in that part of the world are, not just in, in the Palestine-controlled uh, areas, but the, the wider Middle East, except Israel. Who's going to tell them? <laughs> Who's going to tell them? Israel's the only place you'd be safe, mm -hmm. that only place in the Middle East you have legal rights. Now, let's look at more anti-Israel activists uh, vandalising property this time in Cambridge, Massachusetts. So brave and powerful. Now, let's check out this charming lass in Glasgow, Scotland, telling Jews, remember where you were in 1940. I mean, this is just incredible. The the things we are seeing on our streets, the, the ideas, the hate, the absolute uh, unashamed anti-Semitism. Uh, to, to say to Jewish people, remember where you were in 1940, 1945, I mean, I think it's it shocking. A young woman, probably I born in Scotland. Right, probably. And Cambridge that you showed earlier is one of the richest zip codes in the nation and home to the best universities in the world. And they just are in that sort of uh, petri dish, I think, of, of issues. And a lot of those young people, I genuinely think that some of them know exactly what they're saying, but a lot of them actually don't know. And they just look at the whole world through this intersectionality prism and they've decided to stuff the Israel-Palestinian conflict into that lens. Oh, and that's why you see these... That's how they see everything. It's oppressor, oppressed. The Jewish people are successful. They're the oppressors, everyone. It, it is so idiotic, but that's their worldview and they will not be dissuaded from it. Let's go to another delusional lefty losing at this time in Canada. Hamas is not okay. a terrorist group. Okay. Hamas is well, what, not a terrorist group. What is it, like a motorcycle it club? Or? It is a resistance that has been fuming for 75 years of colonialism, of occupation, of murder, of rape, of little children, of women. That's what they are. They are resistance. Do you think Canada is everything, a colonialist country too? Everything that they do is justified. Including what happened thing. last week? Every single thing they have done is justified. Oh, Ma'am, there were children murdered, there were babies beheaded. Oh. Babies beheaded, really. Please educate yourself. I love it when uh, stupid people say, go educate yourself. I mean, it, it is, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the worldview of people like that, what can you do? Even video evidence isn't enough to convince them. And here is an Australian lefty losing it, uh, decolonisation. Well, what did you think it meant? But when you all examined colonisation and decolonising, what did you actually think that would look like like for real it is so interesting watching people comment on this yeah like it's so interesting watching people be shocked I mean, again i mean yes decolonization has become a buzzword but the reality is what we saw mm -hmm. in israel but to then look at people's reactions and, and think it's interesting that they're so shocked. Again, there's a callousness there that I find disturbing. It is. It is callous and they're sort of happy that their, their moment has come. I think some of it is, again, these young people just stuffing every issue in the world into that one singular framework of oppressed oppressor, as you mentioned, Rita. There's a second dynamic, too, at play here that's quite consequential, I think, and that is this experiment of mass migration and immigration, illegal and legal, over the past 
half century in the Western world does lead to this kind of complexity where maybe not these particular people, but there are people who come with different values, different allegiances. This is a very complex conflict going back millennia, and that's why you're seeing it spill out into the streets. Um, it, Europe, I think, most hit by that, where there's five, six, ten percent of the population, you know, comes from a different perspective with this, and that's why I think people are shocked, but maybe shouldn't be. It is the outcome of just when you put together lots of different groups and factions of people, they don't automatically all harmonize and on one worldview. Now, among those who have disgraced themselves with their anti-Israeli sentiments are the Victorian socialists who posted this on social media, solidarity to the Palestinian resistance. They posted that just hours after the so-called resistance had seen people brutalised, people murdered, raped, taken hostage. Well, Dr Jordan Peterson was none too impressed and he posted this response. He said, you murderous anti-Semitic rats. But eagle-eyed overtime viewers noticed that the cover photo for the Victorian socialists include a young lass who looks rather familiar. Could it be this woman who embarrassed herself on the ABC's Q&A program? Talk all this much about uh, individual responsibility. Most of us are never going to be able to afford uh, to have all of these assets to have responsibility over. So what is your advice beyond banal comments like clean your room? Well, you know, it's actually rather difficult to answer a question that ends with your comments are banal politely. And so, you know, I, I, would, I would consider that more of an opinionated personal and political statement than actually a question. So why don't you try reformulating that so that there's an actual question there. What is your He then went on to demolish her pseudo-moralistic stance. But always interesting who the ABC give a platform to, isn't it? <laughs> Victorian socialist. Mm. So representative. I wonder if Jordan Peterson himself was eagle-eyed when he responded to that tweet. Did he know that that was her? I don't think years? so. I don't <laughs> that think would be so. Something. But, yeah, it's funny how everything's uh, weirdly connected. Now, we know that Jordan Peterson has changed the lives of many young men in particular, encouraging them to be responsible, productive members of society, beginning by cleaning their own rooms. Perhaps he can do the same for lost young women. Well, I just went to the library because I refuse to give any money to Jordan Peterson. And I got this, his 12 Rules for Life book, and I'm going to read it so I can critique it and expose him for his bigotry and misogyny. Approximately 10 hours later. Well, I cleaned my room and made my bed. And for some strange reason, I'm craving lobster. Very clever skit there from Reality Shannon. Well done. And let's end on an Aussie note. And it doesn't get any more Aussie than a big red kangaroo trying to drown your dog in a river. Look at my dog. Akosha, I don't know why he would splash it at the end there. That's just, that's not a good move. You do not want to enrage those big reds any more than they're already enraged. Yeah, that, that footage was remarkable and there's probably an allegory there, Rita, but I can't think of what it is. <laughs> well, that footage is going viral and I love how people around the world are just absolutely terrified of Australian wildlife. They think that we just live in the most dangerous corner of the world. But of course it's not true. I mean, our spiders and snakes can kill you. I think there is something like the highest number of predators here, deadly predators. Okay, you're not helping so. that stereotype with <laughs> so your facts that are unhelpful, Kosher Gator. Thank you for your time. It was a pleasure.